The night reeked of sweat and dirt as their faces collided with the ground in the middle of the woods. Tick tried to lift himself up until he felt the barrel of a 12-gauge shotgun press into the back of his head. He had known fear like this before in the war, but in Korea, his future still felt uncertain. Tonight was different. Tonight, his family was here. Letty, his childhood friend, is on his left, and Uncle George is to her left. Their captors, five racist Louisiana police officers, loomed over their unarmed prey, one of which was the town sheriff. Each officer had an appetite for bloodlust and an attitude to match. Tick knew things could only end one way, but he had to try. He needed to plead for their lives. The next words he said could be the only difference between life and death. This could work. Tick opened his mouth to persuade Sheriff Eunice. Everything was just a simple misunderstanding. They were just passing through, but the sheriff's reply let Tick know he'd made a huge mistake. Then tell me, if you're just passing through, why do you know my name? Tick's heart nearly exploded in his chest. They were going to die, right here, right now. The shotgun cocked, Letty screams and please feel the air. Tick closed his eyes, accepting death. A monstrous roar erupted from the depths of the woods. Quiet quickly follows. Everyone is on high alert, their eyes scanning and searching the darkness. Flashlight beams swing left and right, dancing off shrubbery and leaves. Silence hangs in the air, complemented by the soft sounds of a talented cricket. Suddenly, a giant blur launches itself from a nearby bush with speed and accuracy towards the closest officer. An obscured bouquet of teeth crunch into a body as screams erupt in the confusion. The creature disappears into the night, leaving a mangled arm holding a flashlight as the only proof it was ever there. Tick orders everyone to run. He grabs Letty and they propel themselves through the woods as fast as their legs can carry them. George, Tick's aging uncle, was shoved back to the ground by a fleeing officer. Green masses of leaves fly by their faces while the sound of footsteps and hackles chase them. A gunshot rang in the air, then a blood-curdling scream. They run, faster and faster, hearts thumping in their ears. They needed to escape. Tick's lungs burn as his scattered mind seeks to develop some type of plan. They burst through the brush and see a cabin in the woods. They stumble towards the cabin with the officers on their heels. A shadow leapt from the darkness, teeth gleaming in the moonlight. A prison of fangs ferociously ripped apart an officer's head. Blood, bones, and human flesh exploded out of the man's body from the sheer crushing force of this monster's powerful jaw. Claws pierced through the man's body, splitting his remains in half. Letty unleashed a scream that sent chills through Tick's body. The monster flung the lifeless man's body to the side, littering the forest floor with human debris. The monster leered at the officers, with chunks of flesh and blood clinging to its teeth. Tick knew that he didn't need to outrun the monster, only the officers. He grabbed Letty and they retreated towards the cabin. Letty reached the cabin first, but Tick stopped on the porch and turned around on the spot. Something was missing. Uncle George! Where was he? But before Tick could search for him, Letty dragged him into the cabin and slammed the door. Bangs and yells echo from outside the cabin, sounds of pain and agony. The door began to shake. The officers were pleading to be let in. Tick and Letty did their best to hold the officers out of the cabin. They leveraged their bodies against the door, but one well-placed shotgun round sends them diving to the floor. Two officers flood inside and command them to barricade the entrance. The first officer is pale, sweating and wheezing. His shoulder was bitten so badly that his deltoid looked like a glistening slab of wet ground beef. The second had his gun pointed back at the door. He could barely hold it steady with his shaky hands. The officer peered through the window and noticed movement on the right. Someone, or something, was headed right towards them. Tick saw it too and immediately flung the door open and raced outside. He returned with his arms wrapped around Uncle George. Tick steered him into the room. They slammed the door behind them and made a small barricade. Uncle George surveyed the room. The officers had their guns aimed at his chest. They questioned him. Uncle George recapped his entire escape to the cabin. He explained that after he fell down, he stayed down. 
He waited until the coast was clear and had to wrestle the only tool he could find from a dead man's hand. The severed hand gripped the flashlight so tightly that he had to wrench it free. The flashlight was his only guide through the dark, monster-infested woods. A furious discussion erupted concerning their next steps, until the ceiling thumped and shuddered. Dirt and dust fell from above. Silence filled the air. All was quiet. All eyes were trained on the ceiling, senses tuned for any disturbance. The roof creaked from the creature's shifting footsteps. Its claws clicked and slid across the roof, then silence. As if on cue, all eyes fell on Tick. He knew what had to happen. Tick wasn't happy with the plan, but it was the only way they were going to survive through the night. He would much rather risk his own life or even the life of both of the officers instead of what had to happen. But the officers still held the guns. They were going to get their way. Tick's eyes connected with Letty. She took his face in her hands. Tick glared at her, searching her eyes. He saw anxiety. He saw desperation. But most of all, he saw fear. She looked terrified. He felt it too. But he knew this would be his last moments with her. So he took that fear and he pushed it deep deep down. He opened his mouth and said, I'm not scared, cause scared won't save us right now. You are. She nodded. His words sparked something in her. Her courage grew as she started to believe. She could do this. She could do this. She had to. She didn't realize it until that exact moment, but her entire life had prepared her for this. She was all-star track in high school. Tick took his hand and rested on the doorknob. He looked back over his shoulder at her, opened the door, and said one last word to her. Run. Letty ran. Thank you for absorbing this performance. This is a brand new channel, and this was the first production of one of my favorite scenes from the HBO series Lovecraft Country. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like the video. The next performance will be a recreation of a scene from Amazon's The Boys. I'd love to share another scripted sketch with you, so click the subscribe button. Can you think of a better scene? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to cultivate a community of people with a passion for cinema and art, so share this with your friends. I'm looking forward to hearing back from you. Peace.